So we're going to start by importing Seaborn and matplotlib, but we're also going to use pandas for the data frame and then scipy for calculating p-values. All right, now I'm just going to make some random data. I'm going to make two different groups, a control and a drug group, and it's going to span seven weeks, and it's going to have three replicates at each time point. So we're going to have a total of 42 different values. All right, so we have our data frame of 42 different values. So let's just make our base seaborne line plot. And we're going to pass this data frame and then we're going to use week as the x value tumor size as the y value and then treatment as the hue all right now we have this line plot but we're going to make it look a lot better so let's start off by adding markers to where the actual data points are All right, so we just needed to pass treatment as a style. And if we didn't pass dashes equals false, instead of adding these markers, it would have added dashes instead. And then we specify a circle and then a triangle here. And then next, I'm going to add error bars instead of these confidence intervals. I don't really like the look of these error bars. I want to add some caps to them. We can't do that directly in this line plot function. So we're going to need to pass a keyword dictionary. And we'll just call this dictionary error keywords. And then we have to pass cap size. Let's try one at first. All right, I'm not exactly sure. They must not use the X axis. Let's try see what N does. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but that's a little big. Let's do five. That's much better. And then I don't really like these colors. So let's go on over to the matplotlib named colors and choose a new palette. I like this fire brick color, maybe for the drug group. And then I'm going to pick maybe this gray color for the control group. So control comes first. So we need to pass gray first. Let's change the line width here just a little bit. I want it to be a little thicker than the error bars. And then let's make the markers a little bigger. That's a little too big. And then let's make it a nicer size. And then let's start saving it so we know exactly what it's actually going to look like. I think that looks pretty good, but let's just make the font and the axes thicker. So we're just going to loop over the bottom and left axes and then change their line width. All right, and then we're going to get rid of the top and right axes. So let's make these ticks thicker. All right, then let's just change the font size of both the Y and the X axes. And I also changed the weight and made them bold. 
And then let's just change the X and Y axes labels now. Right, so we're almost there. Now we just have to fix this legend. I'm going to get rid of the frame, and then I'll change the font size and weight. All right, so I think this looks pretty good. I actually don't really like how dark the black is. I'm going to change it to a really dark gray. So I'm just going to add color equals 0 0.02 to each of these. All right, I think that looks nicer. The black isn't as sharp. So we're pretty much done here. I'm just gonna add the significance values now. So I'm just gonna write a loop that compares the values in drug Z to the values and control and then adds text onto each of these at this X value and then the max value here. So we can just loop over every week from one to seven. And then we're going to get the values for the drug Z for that week and the values for control for that week. So if we look at Z, it should just be three values. I just filtered the data frame by week and then also by treatment. And then I got the values for the tumor size column. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the control. And then now, since we only have three values, we can't do a U test. Uh, I'm just going to do a T test for this toy example. T test might not actually be the best thing here. So we're just going to do S equals stats dot T test and then Z and C, and it's going to be two-tailed, so we don't have to worry about which comes first. So if we run this, S should be for week seven, and we see that week seven is significant. Actually, I'm just going to call this P, and then do dot P value. And then also, I need the max value for that week, so we can add the label. So we're just filtering on week and then getting all the values for tumor size and finding the max. And then now I'm just going to write a little logic as to whether to label with the NS for not significant or a star, but you could make it more advanced, adding a couple more if statements that I'm going to use. And then we're just going to use plot text. X is just going to equal the week here. Y is going to equal this max value we just found. The string is going to equal star if it is significant. And then I'm just going to change the font size and the alignment of it. Okay, so if the p value is greater than 0 0.05, we're going to do all of this, but add an ns. All right, and then we just have to move this up here. All right, so that actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna change the colors to match, and then I'm just gonna adjust the positioning slightly. All right, so there we go. This was super simple. And now we have this really nice looking line plot. And we've also added significance markers to them. 